Welcome to LeetCode's Blind Created 75, where I'll be solving the top 75 LeetCode questions. This question is called Set Matrix Zeros. Here's the question. Uh, given an m times n matrix, if an element is zero, set its entire row and column to zero. Do it in place. Basically, if anything inside here is a zero, we want to make all the rows and columns for that cell a zero. Now, that sounds easy enough. A straightforward solution using m times n space is probably a bad idea. And like at first, you might think, why do we even need extra space? Why don't we just update this as we go along? But the issue here is every time we see a cell, and if we update all the rows and columns, uh, there's nothing to stop us to know whether the next column is set from zero from the previous step or if it was already a zero. So if we use an m times n space, basically had a replica, replica of our matrix storing the next state and keeping the old state in um, the original matrix, we could easily do it, but we don't want to use extra space. We want to do this in place, right? And how do we, so how do we avoid um, up having this cascading problem with setting these all to zeros and the next time we see it setting the next to zeros. And if we do that, we might end up just making the entire matrix zeros, which isn't what we want. We want to see what would happen just in the next step. Um, so, Okay, so to solve this, uh, let's start with a simple improvement using m time m plus n space. Now, what is this? What if we instead instead of storing the next state of the matrix completely, we just store an array with the rows and columns to indicate to us whether we need to update that row and column. So what we can do is have an array that stores all uh, or the range of rows and a range of rows and a range of columns. And if we see a zero in any of the entire matrix then we'll set that row and column to zero and later come back and update everything. So that way we can kind of store what we need to update and not have to worry about anything cascading. So to do that, let's start with initializing a couple of variables, m, type, m and n, which would be the length of matrix and the length of matrix zero. Now we want to have an extra array to indicate to us the m plus n space and we'll call it just row and column. And this will just be a, a list setting them all to ones at first times the length of M and this would be times length of N. Okay, so let's first go through and update our rows and columns. Uh, so what we'll do is say 4R in range of M and 4C in range of N. Uh, let's check to see if our matrix cell is zero. And if it is, we want to update both the row and column to zero. So we'll say row R is going to be equal to zero and column C is also going to be equal to zero. So now we have what we need to update within these arrays. So now we just need to update it. So let's update our rows first do that, we can just say for r in range of m, uh, if row r is equal to zero, we need to update the matrix r uh, to equal basically all zeros times n. Now we'll do the same thing for columns. We'll say for c in range of n, uh, if column c is equal to zero, we need to set the entire column to zeros, right? But we can't do that easily like this. We'll have to do it in a for loop. So I'll just say for i in range of number of rows, we will update matrix uh, i c to equal zero. And then we can just return the matrix. So basically we're storing this extra information in this array and then we're just gonna go through and update all of it. So let's make sure this works. and that appears to work so let's go ahead and submit that and there you go so this is fine uh, but we want to try doing this in constant space what if we don't even want to use this m plus n space now that's a little bit tricky right because we've already determined that there's really no good way of traversing through our entire matrix without being able to store if we've updated this from before or or if this was not a new update okay so that's really tricky but here's a clue what if we used the first row 
and the first column to kind of do what we did here. What we might be able to do is just store whether we've seen this zero inside this row, like here, and do the same thing for the columns. So then afterwards, we can traverse through our first row and first column to update, make our updates. That would work, but the only problem is what if this zero, What? Uh, how do we know whether this zero in the first row and first column was updated from our, from our traversal or was it a zero to begin with? Because that makes a big difference. If it was a zero to begin with, we know we not want to make this entire row zero, but if it was updated zero from like within the matrix, then we don't want to update this entire row and the first column, same thing for the column. So to take care of that, what we'll do is just check. We'll check in the very beginning, hey, does the first row and first column have a zero? And if it does, we know down the line, we should update that first row or first column to make them all zeros. Okay, so the algorithm is pretty similar, but it's gonna be a little trickier because we need to traverse in the correct path without updating, uh, making any unnecessary updates. Okay, so first let's indicate uh, let's write a first row and first column boolean and we want to check to make sure if the first row or the first column should be updated to zero. So for uh, what we'll do is say for r in range of m uh, if matrix r the first column uh, equals zero any of these that means that the first column should become zero right so we'll say first column equals true. We'll also do the same thing for our row. We'll say for our for C in range of n. If anything in the first row, any of the columns in the first row are zero, then we want to also update that later. So keep that in mind. Now what we'll do is kind of do the same thing but First traverse like within, we're not gonna touch anything or we're not gonna be checking anything in the front side of the first column. Uh, we'll first traverse to the entire matrix, except the first column and to see if there's any zeros. And if there are, we wanna update the zeros here to indicate to us that the row, the entire row is gonna be turned to a zero. All right, so to begin that, let's say for R in range of M, for C in range of N, and actually it's gonna be the first column. Let's check if matrix.rc is equal to zero, we are gonna update the first column in that row to be zero. So we'll say matrix row that's zero, make it equal to zero. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but do it for the columns. And since we've already uh, checked to see whether the zeros are in here for the row, we don't need to check that anymore. So we can just say for R in range of one to M and for C in range of again, one through N. If matrix RC is equal to zero, then we are going to update the um, the column inside that first row. So it'd be the first row, make the column equal to zero. All right, so great. Now let's update our rows and columns. So to do that, we'll say first start with the rows. We'll um, for R in range of M, we're gonna check that first column here to see if it's a zero. So if matrix R zero, is equal to zero, we want to make that entire row into zeros. So to do that, I'll say zero times n like this. Now we want to do the columns, right? So for C in range of n, and I think I need to, I can't do the first one anymore, so I'll check here. We're gonna say if matrix uh, first row column, if it equals zero, then We'll have to iterate down in, in range of M and just update everything in that column to zero. So matrix uh, C, I, C, make them all equal to zeros. Now finally, we need to check to see if our first row and first column 
need to be updated as well. So if first row, what do we do? Uh, well, matrix dot zero is going to be equal to all zeros. And if first column, then well, we'll have to do this again for in range of M uh, matrix. I, um, the first column, make them all equal to zeros. Now I, I may have missed something here. Let me, let me think real quick. Um, let's see. So I'm worried that I up made an update that I didn't need to. Okay, let's first check to see if this works. Okay, this does work for the test example. Let's try a couple more though, just to make sure I didn't miss anything up here. Yeah, so that's why I worried about, um, let's see, what did I miss up? Um, So what I'm going to do is just quickly print the matrix, and I apologize for this. So what do we do here? Um, looks like we updated that first row completely. I don't want to do that. I want to only do it for the first row here. Yeah, okay, so I, th I think that was the problem. Let's see if this works now. Oh, yay, okay. Oh, okay, so this is just um, my mistake here. This shouldn't be an M. That should be a. Oh, wait, what? There we go. Okay, so I apologize for that. Um, little tweaks here and there, but hopefully you get the basic idea. Um, basically, we're using that first row and first column to store that row and row and column information. It's only the first row and first column that we can't account for, so we'll have to do that separately at the very end. Uh, we'll check for to see whether any of those are zeros in the first row and first column, and then we'll update that at the very end. Uh, that way, we know. You know, that, those weren't updated because of anything that happened here. Okay, hopefully that helped. I apologize for this messy solution. There's definitely ways to improve this and make it look cleaner, but as far as time complexity goes, this is m times n and use constant space. So, thanks for watching my channel, and remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.